In the devotional I shared last week, I spoke on the pursuit and cultivation of virtue. I mentioned that it was common characteristic of both Jew and Gentile culture. But the agreement in pursuit certainly doesn't mean they agreed on the ends. That is, they differed greatly on, on listing what the virtues were. The great Greek philosopher Aristotle claimed pride to be the crown of virtues. St. Augustine referred to pride as the beginning of sin. Gregory I in the 6th century named pride as the root of vices, the deadliest of the deadly sins. Of course, Aristotle might have suggested that what he termed pride is different than the Augustinian conception or Gregory's conception, but nuances aside, differences remain. One of the virtues that we see elevated again and again in Scripture is, ironically, humility, the opposite of self-elevation. Scripture tells us in First Peter that God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. The word humble is derived from the word for ground or earth. Eugene Peterson suggests this is the Genesis origin of, of who we are, dust. Dust that the Lord God used to make us a human being. If we cultivate a lively sense of our origin and nurture a sense of continuity with it, Peterson suggests, who knows, we may also acquire humility. In addition to Luke's observation that Barnabas was a good man, uh, as we saw last week, Barnabas had acquired humility. Acts 11.24 tells us that a great number of people were being brought to the Lord in Antioch. Rather than being overcome with a sense of pride at the accomplishment, Barnabas, in humility, recognized this was beyond his abilities. I mean, it's one thing if you're just trying to make believers who pray a prayer, but the early church wasn't interested in that. They were interested in making disciples, not a crowd. And so eventually, Barnabas made the decision to bring in the one who would eventually take his place in lead billing. In other words, Barnabas went out looking for his replacement. Verse 25 tells us, Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. This wasn't the higher up saying, Barnabas, we, we think you need a little bit of help. But Barnabas probably prayerfully sized up the situation and what it needed and went looking for, for Paul. Now, how many of us are intimidated by the influx of, of new young talent? The gifted new employee, which all the business and project starts to gravitate to. The one who everyone looks to for advice or defers to for leadership. Surely Barnabas knew that to bring the, the former rabbinic prodigy would be a godsend to, to the church in Antioch and eventually the, the broader church. But surely he also knew that before long his own star would fade and he would find himself in Paul's shadow. And there's a point in Acts where, where we're going to see this. And for the next two chapters, whenever they're referenced, it will be Barnabas and Saul. Barnabas and Saul. Barnabas' name's first, Saul or Paul's second. Until the end of chapter 13, when it will switch. From then on, it will be Paul and Barnabas. And knowing what we know about the son of encouragement, it's hard to think that Barnabas wasn't behind that change as well. At night, debriefing the, the day's ministry around the fire. And Barnabas calling out ways he was seeing God work in Paul, encouraging him, Paul, you got to be bolder. Share what God is teaching you about faith, grace, and the Messiah, Jesus. That's for another time. Verse 26 tells us, And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. It's the first time in Scripture uh, that Christians are called Christians. It's probably initially a, a derogatory term waged at the community, which conversely, word is a badge of honor. Christians meaning little Christs. Christ was so often on their lips, the motivating force behind their actions and the consistent manner of their, their actions and behaviors that their opponents said, you're little Christs. You're like little Christs. Not a bad nickname. But all of this goes back to Barnabas. The good man allowing the Spirit of God to work through him. 
and in the manner in which he was a little Christ. In humility, go out, going out to, to bring Paul because God's kingdom and God's agenda were ever more important than his own. May we follow his example as he follows Christ. Have a blessed week.